Hi everyone, my name is Peter Gaži and I will talk to you today about ledger combiners for fast settlement. And this is joint work with Matthias Fitzi, Agilus Kiaes and Alexander Russell. Uh, the main objective of this work uh, is to improve settlement times for Nakamoto ledgers. And so let me start at the beginning and describe how Nakamoto consensus works. In this class of protocols, the parties uh, collect transactions into blocks that are then appended into an ever-growing tree, as you can see in the picture. And the current state of the ledger can then be read out from this tree as the longest chain. Uh, and this is also the chain that honest parties extend whenever they get the opportunity to create a block. Uh, these block creation opportunities are somehow distributed fairly uh, using some kind of an anti-civil lottery, uh, which I will talk about in a minute. And uh, pr the pro we, are, uh, we know that protocols from this class have, broadly speaking, the properties that uh, that if a sufficient uh, fraction of the resource underlying this anti-civil mechanism in the lottery uh, is in the hands of honest players, then uh, a so-called eventual consensus arises on uh, which chain is the winning one. And uh, therefore, uh, the more blocks are collected on top of a particular transaction, the more likely it is that this transaction remains a part of the of the ledger uh, uh, in, at the same position uh, for all future times. Several such anti-civil lotteries have been considered uh, to, to be used with Nakamoto consensus. Uh, the most popular is undoubtedly proof of work, where parties uh, try to solve a computational puzzle and the success probability in the lottery is proportional to the amount of computation invested into, into this solving. Uh, but there are also alternatives such as proof of stake, where this success is proportional to the amount of stake owned by the party uh, uh, on the, as recorded on the blockchain itself, or proofs of space, where the success probability is proportional to the amount of typically disk space uh, dedicated uh, to the protocol that cannot be used for other purposes. Uh, Nakamoto consensus comes with a lot of advantages. Uh, it's a simple and elegant protocol but it also has turned out to be very resilient to hostile environments. Uh, in principle, an arbitrary minority of the underlying resource can be controlled by an adversary trying to disrupt the system, and still the protocol provides eventual consensus. And this is also true uh, in settings with fluctuating levels of participation, where parties might join and leave the execution of the protocol at will without notifying others, uh, be, uh, others beforehand. Uh, and, uh, and even in this setting, uh, the protocol provides uh, eventual consensus as long as the honest majority assumption is true for the parties uh, that still participate in the protocol. Uh, the performance uh, metric that we will be interested in in, in this work is uh, settlement time or, uh, or latency. I will be using these two terms as synonyms throughout the talk. And by this, I mean the time uh, between uh, the moment when the transaction enters the system uh, and parties start to try to include this transaction into the ledger and the moment when this transaction is universally recognized as a stable entry in the ledger. And when it comes to latency in Nakamoto consensus, there is an intrinsic barrier in play here, uh, which I would like to talk about. So imagine a transaction that is included in a block, in a Nakamoto-style blockchain, we know that its stability is proportional to the number of blocks on top uh, of, this, of this transaction. However, in reality, the picture would look more like this. And the reason is that uh, there is an intrinsic limit on the block creation rate in all these protocols. And the reason is that we want to avoid forks. And if blocks are created too often, then even honest parties create forks uh, because they uh, simply don't know about other blocks created by other, other honest parties due to network delays. And this limited block creation rate implies also limited settlement speed, as is clear from, from the picture above. There have been several approaches to overcome this, uh, this latency barrier of Nakamoto-style uh, protocols. And with very few exceptions, they can be uh, split into two categories. Uh, in the first one, uh, the protocols uh, rely on stronger assumptions and uh, provide improved latency guarantees in the optimistic settings where these stronger assumptions are satisfied. And typically, uh, the protocols fall back to standard Nakamoto security and latency guarantees if the assumptions are violated. Uh, another, another group of solutions are so-called layer 2 solutions, uh, which give up on the goal uh, 
of uh, maintaining a distributed ledger of all transactions in the system and rather let parties uh, settle their transactions bilaterally and only inform the ledger occasionally about the outcome of such settlement. And both these approaches have their merits. Uh, nonetheless, there is still a fundamental question remaining, which is what are the best latency guarantees that can be achieved by Nakamoto consensus without, uh, without many, making any of these concessions. This is the question that we are looking at in this work. And uh, the approach that we take to address it is to leverage parallel composition. And let me just briefly mention at this point that uh, in broad terms, a very similar approach, uh, although uh, in a different shape, was taken also in the design of the recent PRISM protocol. So let's move to our contributions. Um, to be able to express our combiner result, results, uh, the first contribution that we that we put forward is uh, is a new abstract model for uh, for ledgers uh, with the design goals of uh, simplicity and generality, so that it allows us to express the combiner results uh, in the simplest way possible. And using this new uh, new model and new language, we then uh, provide two classes of combiners. The first one is a, a combiner for security amplification and observe that this is the same thing as latency reduction, in fact. And the second one is a robust ledger combiner. I will now give you a one slide overview of each of these contributions before diving uh, into details of some of them. So first, looking at our model, uh, the, the basic notion that we define is uh, so-called ledger, uh, unsurprisingly. And this is, a, this is a, basically a static snapshot of the state of uh, the blockchain, if you wish, or another structure carrying a ledger. Uh, and therefore, it simply consists of a static set of transactions and a rank function that attributes a positive real number to each transaction in this set. And the role of this, uh, of this rank function is that it both orders the transactions, it captures their stability, uh, and it's also loosely related to time. I will discuss all these points uh, in greater detail later. But if you want to have a, an intuitive uh, example of a, of a rank function, just consider uh, the timestamp of the block carrying the transaction in uh, protocols such as Bitcoin. Uh, on top of this static notion, we also define a, a notion of a dynamic ledger, which, is, uh, which captures the evolution of the ledger in time. And therefore, it's a time-indexed sequence of uh, such static ledgers that I described you above. And uh, this simple formalism is already sufficient to express persistence and liveness as properties of our interest. And I will show you how this is done and how this allows us to capture the properties of uh, our combiners. Uh, given that, the first combiner that we present is a security amplifying combiner, which takes m parallel independent dynamic ledgers of the type I just described to you and produces a a single virtual dynamic ledger um, on top of those, which is again a dynamic ledger of, uh, of the type uh, we, we introduced, uh, in such a way that this, uh, this combined construction allows for something we call fast submission, where a transaction can be entered into all of the underlying ledgers uh, at the same time. And this provides a settlement type speed up by a factor that is linear in M, which is the number of the underlying ledgers. Um, but at the same time, the construction also allows for a slow submission mode, if you wish, uh, where the settlement time guarantees are uh, essentially comparable to those of an underlying ledger. And this basically means submitting the transaction to a single, single one of the underlying ledgers. And there is this additional multiplicative factor of uh, logarithm of m uh, in play here. Uh, and uh, let me already mention at this point that a uh, typical settlement time in a Nakamoto-style ledger to obtain a negligible error is uh, proportional to the security parameter. Uh, and uh, therefore, if we allow uh, the number of changes in our construction to scale with the security parameter, uh, then we, we obtain a construction that provides constant time settlement only with negligible error. And this is the first time such a construction is, uh, is provided. Uh, and finally, uh, the second combiner that we present in our work is a robust combiner, meaning that it again combines M parallel dynamic ledgers into a single one, uh, having a robustness property, which means that some persistence and liveness guarantees are maintained uh, 
even if a minority of the of the underlying ledgers are fully corrupted and uh, do not provide any any reliable state anymore. Uh, this treatment uh, illustrates the versatility of our dynamic ledger notion. However, I will not uh, not give you further details on this construction, but I invite you to look into the paper if you are interested. Uh, so with that, let me let me discuss in greater detail the first two contributions that I that I mentioned to you. And uh, again, let uh, let's start with uh, with the model itself that we propose. Uh, as I already mentioned, the basic notion is a static notion of a ledger that consists of a pair uh, of a set of transactions and a rank function. And on top of that, we consider this dynamic ledger, which uh, captures the evolution of the ledger in time, and it's a time-indexed sequence of ledgers that we will denote, as you can see uh, in the picture, uh, where LT is the ledger corresponding to time step T. Um, in, in the visualizations that, uh, that I will show you in a minute, uh, I will typically depict uh, this, uh, a ledger that corresponds to a time T, so the ledger LT, uh, by a line of length T. And the reason for this is that one can then intuitively uh, vis uh, visualize uh, transactions that have a rank uh, at most t as uh, as, a, as points on uh, on this line where the position of the point corresponds to the rank of the transaction. And this is uh, this is the um, this is the the visualization uh, approach that I will I will adopt in in the future in the future descriptions. Uh, and with that, I will I will try to, to show you how we express liveness and persistence in this formalism. So let's start with liveness and let's consider a transaction that enters the system at some time t0. Uh, then we require that if we look at a particular ledger lt that, is, uh, that corresponds to a time uh, step t that is sufficiently later after t0, we require that this transaction appears uh, in this ledger lt and it, and it appears there with a rank that is at most t0 plus r, where r is a parameter of, of this liveness property. And uh, we also allow uh, this to, uh, uh, to only hold with, uh, uh, with the probability uh, that allows for an error uh, upbounded by, by an error function denoted L for liveness that takes this, uh, this size of the window r uh, as its input. Uh, similarly, we also define persistence, where if we look at the ledger LT, LT plus one, and all the subsequent ledgers, uh, and we, we take a parameter R that defines uh, this uh, window, uh, as you can see in the picture, uh, and we look at the prefixes of all these ledgers uh, consisting of transactions that have rank at most T minus R, then we require that these prefixes are identical in the sense that they contain the same transactions uh, with the same ranks. And again, uh, this should be true except with, uh, with an error that is bounded by an error function uh, denoted by P and uh, depending on the, the length of this, of this interval R. In fact, we will call this property absolute persistence and uh, denote the error function PA correspondingly because we also introduce a weaker property that is new to our work, uh, which we call relative persistence and which I will tell you about next. Uh, in the definition of relative persistence, we again look at uh, a ledger LT and uh, the subsequent ledgers. And uh, we now define two uh, consequent intervals uh, of size R and T, uh, respectively, as you can see in the picture. And we require that any transaction that currently at time T appears in this first segment of the ledger LT, which means uh, it has a rank at most T minus R minus S. Uh, in any future ledger LT prime, it will have to appear somewhere uh, within the first two segments of that ledger, so up to rank T minus S. This means that the transaction doesn't need to be stable yet. Uh, its rank might change, but it cannot increase too much. Uh, and we also require a dual property, uh, which is that any transaction that uh, would appear in any such future ledger LT prime within these first two segments, so with rank at most T minus S, uh, already has to be present in our ledger LT at, uh, now, which is at time T. This is what is, uh, what is uh, illustrated by this second subset uh, relation in the picture. And again, we allow for, for an error probability uh, bounded by an error function PR depending on the 
on the sizes of these intervals R and S. Uh, now, this might sound as a somewhat uh, arbitrary notion, so let me try to convince you that relative persistence is, in fact, uh, a, useful, a useful notion. Uh, first of all, notice that it's weaker than absolute persistence, and therefore it potentially might occur faster. And uh, in, in our later, later treatment, we show that in the cases we are interested in, it actually does. Uh, however, it's interesting that relative persistence is often already sufficient for settlement. And let me let me give you some more details for this. So, so let's start with a with a very natural and unsurprising setting that liveness and absolute persistence together imply settlement, or if you wish, absolute settlement, which just means that the ledger up to the transaction of our interest will not change. And this is a very simple statement that can be obtained by combining liveness to show that the transaction will be included in the ledger and absolute persistence to show that its position and, uh, and the prefix up to the transaction will not change. Uh, however, interestingly, there is also an analog of this statement uh, working with the relative notions, namely so showing that liveness and relative persistence imply uh, a relative settlement, which is a term that we introduce. And uh, what it roughly means is that the trans transaction will stay in the ledger and any conflicting transaction, tx prime, that could potentially overtake our transaction tx in the future, is already present in the ledger. And note that this is exactly what uh, relative persistence uh, guarantees you, namely this second property. Because uh, as you can see here in the picture defining relative persistence, uh, if a transaction uh, is observed by a party to be in the ledger LT, in the current ledger, in this first segment, then it know, the party knows that the transaction might, uh, might uh, change its, uh, its rank, but it will in any future ledger be called, contained in these first two segments uh, of the ledger. And any transaction that would uh, also be part of these first two segments already has to be present uh, in the current ledger that the party sees. And so uh, this is exactly the second property that we want for a relative settlement. And a relative settlement actually turns out to be useful because uh, if you consider, for example, UTXO transactions as being part of the Bitcoin system, then uh, imagine a UTXO transaction where all of its inputs are already settled and the transaction itself is relatively settled. Uh, and we don't see any conflicting transaction currently in the ledger. Then we know that uh, our transaction will never be overtaken by a conflicting transaction, and we and it, and it cannot be invalidated in the future. Therefore, we can already act based upon it, depending on the semantics of the transaction. So, just to sum up, a uh, dynamic ledger is uh, such a such such a time index sequence of uh, static ledgers with these three properties: liveness, absolute persistence, and relative persistence, and being parameterized by the respective error functions. And uh, notice that prior work studying concrete protocols show that uh, these concrete uh, ledger protocols under some safe conditions, which, is, which means different things for different protocols, but it's typically the honest majority assumption, bounded network delays, and so on. Uh, both Nakamoto ledgers, but more, more broadly, a uh, wider class of protocols uh, provide exponential security in the sense that uh, both absolute persistence and uh, liveness are provided except with, uh, uh, with an exponentially vanishing error term. And uh, all these protocols can be captured as such exponentially secure ledgers in our framework. And notice that, uh, in fact, our formalization does not need any formal notion of an adversary. And that's because the error functions themselves already cover uh, any, any uh, presence of the adversary and any actions or consequences of any actions that the adversary might take under such safe conditions. Uh, so this, uh, this was a brief introduction into our model and uh, with that let me use it to, to describe our ledger combiner that provides security amplification and our goal which is latency reduction. Before giving you the construction let me just briefly comment on the independence assumption that we need to make. Clearly, some independence need to be assumed uh, to obtain some amplification. However, it seems unlikely that one could assume full independence of such ledgers. And therefore, uh, we define the notion of uh, sub-independence, where dynamic ledgers are called sub-independent if any subset of them and the collection of the respective failure events 
where by failure events uh, we mean a failure of any of the three properties that I told you about, uh, have the property that the probability that these failures occur in all of the ledgers is upper bounded by the product of um, of uh, these failure events occurring in the individual ledgers, which are bounded by the error functions I uh, I described to you uh, a minute ago. And we also talk about epsilon sub-independence uh, when we condition on an event that occurs with probability at least one minus epsilon. Uh, in the paper, we also uh, look carefully at how epsilon sub-independence can be obtained both in the POS and POW settings. Uh, let me just briefly sketch that. In the POS case, one can obtain this property by running uh, parallel uh, Nakamoto-style POS ledgers where the leaders are sampled from the joint state distribution uh, across all these ledgers, but the randomness being used for sampling them uh, is independent for each of these, for each of these ledgers. And in the POW case, uh, we can leverage the so-called so uh, M41 POW uh, mechanism, where the miner uh, cannot decide for which blockchain he wants to mine a block, rather he needs to make a mining attempt, and only if he succeeds, he learns uh, to which of the blockchains the block can be uh, can be added, and in both the cases these these measures are uh, put in place to make sure that the adversary cannot uh, disproportionately focus his his powers on one of the underlying uh, ledgers. Uh, let me just remind you that uh, we aim at providing a combiner that allows to submit a transaction to. Uh, either all underlying ledgers simultaneously or just to a single ledger, which we call fast and slow submission modes, respectively. And also all intermediate possibilities are possible, of course. Uh, and this mode of submission can be chosen per transaction by the user uh, issuing this transaction. And this offers a nice trade-off uh, because typically, typically there are fees associated with entering a transaction into a ledger. and uh, and uh, this means that the more fees you are willing to pay, the better settlement guarantees our construction provides to your transaction. So with that, let me describe the heart of our construction, which is its rank function. And this rank function tells us how the rank of a transaction in the combined ledger is derived from the ranks of this transaction in the underlying ledgers. Um, it's, de it's defined by the formula you can see in the gray box in the slides, and I will now give you the intuition behind this formula. So first observe that it indeed combines the ranks of the transaction in the un individual underlying ledgers, where the index i goes, uh, goes from 1 through m, which are the underlying uh, ledgers. And also notice that the rank function is parameterized by, uh, by a natural number l. Uh, I will talk about its role in a minute. And there is also a threshold theta playing a role, which is simply the minimum of the rank of the transaction across all the underlying ledgers, plus this L log M term, as you can see in the slides. So looking at the, at the formula, uh, a, good, a good way to get some intuition about it is to see it as a simple average under the exponential functional x minus rank over L, uh, which is justified by the equation that, uh, that I show you in the slides that, that really positions uh, this rank as such, uh, such average. And uh, this form of the, of the formula is inspired by some results from the theory of regret minimization. Uh, one can observe simple lower and upper bounds for this rank function, namely it's lower bounded by the minimum rank of the respective transaction across all of the underlying ledgers, and it's upper bounded by this minimum plus the, log, the L log M term, as you can see. Uh, now, an important role in this formula is played by this parameter L, and uh, to be able to appreciate it, uh, observe that, in fact, we put uh, two seemingly contradicting requirements on the stabilization speed that our construction should provide. And by stabilization speed, uh, I mean uh, how quickly the stability of uh, a transaction grows as a function of uh, basically the difference between the current time and the rank that is attributed to this transaction. Uh, we require an m-fold speed up for, uh, for fast submissions, but also in the long term, for slow, submi uh, slow submissions, we cannot provide more than uh, or, or better stabilization speed than a single ledger provides. And that's exactly because a single in, in slow submission mode, the, the transaction is only submitted to a single ledger. And so there needs to be a transition between these two, uh, two 
stabilization speeds, if you wish. And uh, L is the parameter that, that characterizes this uh, point of transition. Um, uh, looking ahead, we will be choosing L to be proportional to the security parameter, so that uh, X minus L is an acceptable error probability. And therefore, by the time that we transition from the, from the accelerated uh, stabilization speed to the standard stabilization speed, we will already uh, be observing an error that is uh, uh, acceptable, acceptable to the designers of the construction. And uh, this consideration is uh, intuitively depicted in this, uh, in this informal figure at the, the right-hand side, where we, uh, where we plot uh, the, somehow the stability of a transaction, so uh, the negative log of uh, the probability of a, fa uh, of a failure of uh, stability, uh, as a function of, uh, of the difference of the current time minus the rank of the transaction. And the solid black line describes uh, describes the stabilization speed of a single of a single ledger uh, that provides exponential security. Um, uh, where this uh, yeah where this where this uh, e uh, exponent uh, increases linearly, as uh, as you can see, and the the dotted uh, black line uh, illustrates uh, optimum amplification, where uh, where its slope is m times higher than the slope of the solid black line. And uh, the blue line captures what our what our construction provides, uh, and we can see that uh, it provides uh, this accelerated stabilization speed at the beginning, and later the stabilization speed converges uh, to that of a single ledger, as it necessarily has to due to the observation that I just gave you. Uh, so this is this is in some sense the best one could get, and this is also what our construction provides. Uh, let me also mention this uh, this threshold theta. Uh, the reason we have it in the in the formula and we only count contributions from uh, from the ledgers in which uh, the rank of a transaction is not too much larger than uh, the minimum rank across all of the ledgers is that the absolute persistence property is sensitive to small changes in rank, and uh, such a cutoff point guarantees that eventually even absolute stability is achieved. And finally, I will just mention in passing that we actually, in settings where we do have a conflicting rela uh, conflict relation on the, on the space of transactions that are being considered, this is something that we formally describe in the paper, uh, we consider a preemptive version where the contributions are only counted from ledgers where the transaction is not preceded by a conflicting one. And with that, uh, I will, I'm now able to formulate our main result for this, uh, for this uh, combiner. Uh, if we take and this result uh, shows that if we take m dynamic ledgers d1 through dm with exponential liveness and persistence, absolute persistence guarantees that are sub-independent and uh, operate on, um, on a transaction space with a conflict relation, uh, then this construction that I just described to you, uh, our combiner, uh, achieves uh, both, uh, I mean, can operate with bo in both fast submission and slow submission modes. And in the case of fast submission, the probability that a transaction is not relatively settled after two R time steps is upper bounded by these two exponential terms, where the first one uh, captures the n-fold speed up and is dominant at the beginning uh, after the transaction is submitted. And later, uh, the second term becomes dominant and this, uh, this uh, captures the standard settlement speed uh, that is achieved later. And uh, and the construction also can be used for slow, slow submission, as I already said, and uh, there the probability that the transaction is not absolutely settled after two R steps is upper bounded by this exponential term, providing the standard settlement speed with this uh, with settlement times multiplied by this additional factor of log m, as I mentioned uh, earlier. And let me conclude by uh, formulating the corollary of our fast submission result. Uh, which says that if we take a number of chains that is proportional to the security parameter, then, uh, as we already observed, our combiner uh, with, the si uh, with the fast submission mode uh, achieves constant time settlement, except with a negligible error. So this, uh, these are the main results of our work. Uh, I, with that, I would like to thank you for your attention, and uh, I'll be happy to take questions. Thank you.